This video is for entertainment purposes only and is not financial advice. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video I wanted to give you a portfolio update on my Shazies Public Portfolio for the month of July 2021. So this is the portfolio's two year anniversary. So I started this portfolio on the 1st of August, 2019. And that's also around the time when I started this YouTube channel. So I'm very excited for today's video. I'll share with you two stocks that I recently bought on the portfolio and one that I recently sold, as well as give you guys my market view in terms of where the economy is, what the issues that a lot of pundits are talking about. And I'll also share with you my portfolio strategy going forward, as well as a small life update as well. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe, but with no time wasted, let's get right into the video. So over here, I have my Shazies Public Portfolio. Currently, it's worth around 19000 $365.91 in New Zealand dollars. So this portfolio has delivered a total return of $3,492.06, representing a simple return of 19.84%. So early August, this portfolio was worth about $1,000 and every week I've consistently added in $70. Initially in 2019, I added in 35 because the portfolio was a little bit smaller. And now I do add $70 each week. I also put in all the uh, referral link money. People who have used the link to sign up with Shazies. I have a link down below. If you do that, you get $5, I get $5. So I put everything back into the portfolio and for every 100 subs on the channel, I also added in $100. So you can see over time, the portfolio value has increased quite consistently. This minor drop over here, that was COVID. So during COVID, the portfolio went into the negative, but then subsequently it did recover as the general stock market as a whole also recovered. And now the gains are quite substantial. Uh, currently sitting at about 3,600 according to this graph over here. So this minor dip, you can see this dip over here was because I did sell out on my ETF positions and now I mainly focus on individual stocks. So in my private portfolio, I don't own any ETF. So having the public portfolio follow that, uh, I think would be more beneficial and more helpful for you guys following the channel as well. So that is the portfolio history. Now I'll show you guys the new stocks that I recently bought in the portfolio. The first one is Collins Foods Limited. I've made a video on this last week, so you can check that out over here. So basically Collins Foods Limited is an operator of KFC stores in Australia. They also operate the Taco Bell restaurants in Australia and KFC restaurants in Europe. In my opinion, Collins Foods is a very easy business to understand. It has growth as well as defensive characteristics, which means that the stock should be able to perform well regardless of the economic situation. Going forward, I think this company can deliver earnings growth around 10% per year as well as a 2% dividend, so roughly 12% returns per year, assuming there's nothing wrong with the business, assuming the business uh, doesn't deteriorate. In terms of economic climate, however, I don't think that should affect Collins Foods too much because it is a very defensive stock and uh, this stock has some built-in inflation uh, resistance. Essentially, they're able to increase their prices quite easily in case there's inflation. If not, then they will continue to do well by opening new stores and whatnot. So I think this company is poised to do quite well in the current economic climate. And the second new stock that I added this month and actually a few days ago, just this week was Center Group. So Center Group is listed on the ASX and they own and operate the Westfield shopping malls in Australia as well as in New Zealand. So I'll talk about this company a little bit later, but I don't wanna give away too much detail because I will make a subsequent video for Center Group just looking at the business as a whole. All right, so I've put in 2,300 Aussie dollars in the stock. And finally, we have the Smart Shares NZ Top 50 Fund. This is the benchmark that I have for this portfolio because this was a position that I bought in when I started this portfolio. And uh, subsequently, I sold down all the position but uh, left $1 in this position to have it as a benchmark. Currently, the NZ Top 50 Fund has delivered 16.9% since fund inception. And uh, my portfolio has delivered a return of 19.84%. So I'm very happy with the portfolio portfolio performance over the past two years. Now let's take a look at the spreadsheet to show you how the positions 
have moved compared to last month. So over here, I have my spreadsheet updated as at the end of Friday closing. So as you can see over here, I've allocated pretty much all of my cash available. Last month, I had $2,362. This month, I only have $2.30 left. A lot of that has had gone into the new stocks that I own, which is Center Group, currently allocated 12.6% of my portfolio into this stock, as well as 5.5% towards Collins Foods Limited. I have the largest position in Oceania Healthcare, and that's increased by 0.8% over the past month. Secondly, Harlan Group Holdings increased by 0.3%. Infratil has been largely unchanged. Now, in terms of Auckland International Airport, I've increased the allocation by 0.8% to 8.7% because Auckland International Airport did take a little bit of a dip during this month on the back of news of the trans Tasman bubble taking a pause. So essentially, New South Wales had a ton of Delta cases popped up, and what that did was uh, New Zealand had closed off its borders to Australia. So they'll be taking a little bit of a break. And so what that did was obviously that will impact Auckland Airport's uh, passenger arrivals from Australia, causing the share price to dip a little bit. So I've taken that opportunity to add into my portfolio. Next up, we have Argosi. That's not changed. Now, in terms of Kogan, Kogan has dropped 0.4%. So last month, Kogan's share price was a $11.44, currently it's at $10.39, and that is on the back of a trading update where investors were concerned about the inventory levels. So it'll be very interesting to see what the next update will tell us, and I'll be keeping a close eye on that. Now, in terms of Collins Foods, as I mentioned before, this is a new position allocated 5.5% and I'll be looking to add more if the share price comes down. Macquarie have not changed that, that sits at 2.8%. And lastly, the stock that I sold down was the NZX, so that is the exchange itself, not an ETF, and that freed up 7.6% of my portfolio in terms of capital so that I can allocate into Collins as well as center group. So I've sold down on the NZX stock, and the reason being is because I thought its valuation got too ahead of itself, so over here I have NZX uh, next 12 months price to earnings ratio and as you can see over here it currently sits at around 30 times. So this company hasn't really grown its revenue that much over the past few years. It did post quite a good previous financial year but that was on the back of the Rona. If you look at the performance of the business it hasn't really grown that much over the past five years but if you look at its valuation over the past five years it's definitely had grown quite substantially from trading around 20 times to now sitting at 30 times but its earnings haven't followed so i've decided to take that opportunity to sell this company at a relatively high price to earnings ratio of around 30 times i'm looking for companies that can grow its earnings so that it can grow its dividends as well over time for example collins foods has been consistently increasing its earnings per share over time and that has been rewarded with a higher price to earnings multiples. So if you buy a company that can increase its price to earnings multiple, as well as its earnings per share, that will deliver you superior returns because there's a multiplier effect of uh, both increasing earnings per share as well as price to earnings ratio. So um, that is the ideal company you want. NZX had an increasing price to earnings ratio, but not increasing earnings per share. So take an advantage of that to sell down on that position. After selling my NZX position, I put that money into Center Group, which makes up roughly 12.6% of the portfolio. That is quite a high allocation for a stock that I only recently bought just last week. However, the reason why I did that was because Center Group was experiencing some share price weakness over the past week on the back of the extended New South Wales lockdowns its share price was disproportionately hit. So I've taken advantage of that. I don't think that fear will last forever. So I've put in quite a large amount over here initially, but I do want to add more over the coming few weeks. So uh, I'll be making a dedicated video on Center Group later on in this month. So let me take you through how I see the market at the moment and my portfolio strategy going forward. So in terms of the market view, a lot of focus has been on interest rates and interest rates are expected to increase globally with the RBNZ leading RBA 
and the Fed in the US. And secondly, inflation is high on last year's comparables. However, there's a huge debate on whether it is transitory or whether it's not. So in terms of going forward, I don't know how inflation is going to turn out. It might be temporary, it might not be. So that is definitely something to keep in mind as well. And lastly, there's a big push for vaccinations due to Delta. Some economies are hit harder and that does provide some opportunities out there to buy on uh, share price weaknesses. So understanding this market view that has given me some ideas in terms of where I want to focus my attention for this portfolio. In terms of the portfolio stocks itself, I am aiming to keep it New Zealand uh, NZX and ASX focused for now. However, I do find that NZX opportunities are hard to find at the moment. So NZX stocks are stocks that pay good dividends that don't have very much growth uh, characteristics in them. So if you think about the gen tailors, if you think about the ports, uh, they don't really generate huge amounts of growth. They generate stable free cash flow that can pay dividends out. So if interest rates go up, that will decrease the attractiveness of these stocks going forward. Forward. So that's something I'm keeping in mind. I might add US stocks in the future. However, I do want to keep this portfolio NZX and ASX focus. Uh, but then again, if there's a good opportunity in the US, I would not hesitate to add that in the portfolio. And I do want to keep this portfolio a high conviction portfolio. So I'll be having some stocks that have a high allocation. Uh, likely to be above 20%. So currently the only stock above 20% is Oceania Healthcare, but I do want to add more stocks with high conviction up there. So um, this portfolio might be a little bit volatile at times, but I think uh, if I do pick stocks right going forward, this portfolio will do well. So this might not be everybody's cup of tea, and uh, this portfolio is not necessarily a model that you should copy, but it does reflect my individual risk tolerance and my uh, re required rate of returns going forward. So uh, that is the portfolio direction and where I am going to take this portfolio to. In terms of my life in general, I just want to give you guys a quick little update. So I have recently this month uh, entered into a new full-time job. So starting 1st July, and that's the reason why I haven't been as active on this channel. So I'd like to post more, but unfortunately, you know, with a full-time job, it gets quite hard. As well as that, I've been uh, planning for a wedding in the uh, for the past few months. So the wedding is in October. So uh, yeah, I'll be very busy until then as well. So I won't be posting as much, and I might not give you guys a portfolio update every month as well. And if you do have anything you want to ask, I am on Instagram. So uh, yeah, my Instagram plug will be down there somewhere in the video description. But I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys who have supported me during this two years that I've been on YouTube. Really appreciate every one of you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Until next time, guys, take care.